Standing was too tall, laying down was too low. And see how I put the coyote right in that band there? And then I went with a little bit of a darker exposure. And then with some post-processing, got that. I love it, it's one of my favorite shots. At this point, I threw my 35 millimeter, the lens baby on, that has this little tilt shift action to it. And that's what I wanted to try and play with, look at that. I just keep bouncing back and forth between zoomed and not, so I can see the composition and see if the bird is turning. There you can see he's turning. Walking a little bit, and there's the image I got. Hey, how's it going everybody? So I totally forgot to do the setup video while I was out in New Mexico for this shoot with the sandhill cranes and the snow geese and the surprise coyote. So <clears throat> I was out in New Mexico to do some teaching out there for the festival of the cranes, which was really cool and fun. That's the reason I ended up out there. Of course, now I get the angry squirrel screaming at me over here. So I guess you'll get to hear that in the background. Anyway, um, I ended up going to one of the main uh, kind of pools that the cranes and the snow geese uh, congregate at in the evening and they kind of roost over there overnight so I guess it's basically like an overnight roost for them and I wanted to do that at least once while I was out there uh, that was not my priority while I was out there for my own personal shooting I would much rather kind of check out the other things which is what I did a little bit more of but I figured while I'm there for the festival of cranes let me go out at least once and photograph those cranes and kind of see what it's all about because it's such a popular area and so well known for that. So I have to say I've photographed sandhill cranes quite often before here in Florida where I'm at right now and they're really friendly so you can get close to them and the scenery here is pretty nice but it is certainly not as cool as the scenery and the background habitat out there in New Mexico. So that was one of the things I really wanted to try and incorporate so I made sure with these planes. Gotta love the plane flying directly overhead when I'm trying to record this, right? All right, you should be able to hear me now. So like I was saying, that's definitely one of the things I really wanted to try and incorporate. So I made sure to use my 100 to 400 millimeter lens. And I even played around with the 35 millimeter lens baby tilt shift because I was trying to get something unique and different. So one of the things I really concentrate on when I go to a place that is pretty popular and tons of amazing photographers, I've taken tons of amazing photographs in a location is I try to see if I can come up with something unique. And so, one of the main things I did, which you can't really see from the video, but maybe you can see a little bit, so I wanted to explain it here, was I got a very low perspective. When you arrive there and notice everybody's lined up, they're all just lined up standing on tripods or you know just standing there holding their cameras along this pool. And while that's fine for just flight shots in the air, what I wanted to try and incorporate, and I wasn't able to do uh, exactly the way I wanted, I wasn't able to get the shot I wanted, but I was at least trying for this. And what I wanted to do was get a sandhill crane or a snow goose, any bird basically, flying in and landing, backlit. So I was shooting into the sun in the evening and I knew that would be the case. But I wanted to get them backlit right when they were kind of flaring and landing. So if you're standing up when they're flying by, you can get them flying against the mountains and it looks great, but you don't see the ground or the water that they're landing in. So you don't get that context. You just get the bird up in space and you do get to see the habitat in the background, which is great. But I love to get that foreground layer, that bottom layer. And in this case, it was water, not land. And yeah, I really wanted to get the water and then the bird coming in just over top of that. So if I'm shooting down from a standing perspective, I'm going to be seeing all of the water in focus and textured. It was also windy, so there was a lot of ripples and waves on the water. So I'd be seeing all of that, and that's not what I wanted. So my goal was to get a low perspective and shoot from the water level so I could get a blurred foreground of water. Turns out the lighting didn't work out the way I had hoped, and the water was too ripply. If it was calm, I think I could have gotten some pretty cool shots, but because it was not calm, it was really windy, uh, the water was really textured and ripply, like I said many times, and it just didn't look nice. And the sun was so strong that when I shot into it, uh, the glow on the wings of the bird was great when they were landing, but the glow on the water was so bright, it just overexposed it, so I couldn't get any detail there. So that ended up being the problem that I didn't anticipate, but that was my first time shooting there, so that's kind of how it goes, you know. Um, but conceptually, uh, I think that's a great thing to pay attention to is to try and get that different perspective. 
So keeping those sort of things in mind and trying to come up with that unique perspective, that different perspective that not everyone else is doing is my goal all the time. And that's also the reason I ended up using that 35 millimeter lens baby tilt shift lens is because I don't think that's something I've ever seen uh, shot in that particular location. And again, while I didn't get any, well, I got one shot that was kind of cool and I didn't really get anything I loved, um, at least I was trying to shoot something different instead of just shooting the same thing that everybody else is doing. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but my goal always is to try and come up with something unique, something different, and something a little bit more creative. And so that's what I was trying to do. It, like I said, it didn't work out, but um, always at least trying these things I think is key. Even when you go to a new place that you've never been, you know? Uh, and it's not to say I didn't take some more standard shots. I certainly did. And I even went back another day with just a longer lens and shot some more standard just flight shots against the sky because I did realize that with that lighting situation there, the sun as strong as it was on the water, um, getting that low perspective didn't really help out. Uh, but those are the things I want you to kind of keep in mind when you go out and shoot everywhere, but especially if you go to a new place, you know, is even if you want to get those standard shots, the, the good classic shots that you've seen from a place, maybe knock those out in the beginning uh, or, you know, keep them in mind to capture, but try not to do them the entire time and try and do something a little different, uh, whether that be a different perspective, a different lighting, a different lens, uh, just something different than what everybody else is doing, you know? And so I know it can be a little awkward sometimes. Um, for example, I was standing there with probably, you know, 50 to 100 different people lined up. Um, I know that's a big range of numbers there, but I didn't really pay attention. But there was a lot of people behind me. Everybody's lined up doing the same thing. They're all standing there on tripods, and I'm the one oddball laying down in kind of the mud trying to get that low perspective. Um, but I've long ago gotten over that kind of awkward feeling of you know being the person that's standing out because that's kind of the goal with my photography is to stand out, right? If I'm taking the same photo as everybody else from the same perspective, it's not to say that I can't come up with a different setting or a different exposure or a different composition, but it's harder to get a totally unique look if you're standing in the same spot and shooting in the same manner that everybody else is, you know? Whereas if you pick a completely different perspective uh, or shoot a completely different lens, that inherently just gives you a different look right to start out with. So anyway, that's the setup for what I did out in New Mexico. I didn't get a ton of great shots. It was my first time there. So, you know, I didn't have a lot of experience. I wasn't able to really lean on, you know, past failures and past successes or any of that sort of thing. I just kind of went out and uh, tried to see what I could find. And the last thing I'll point out that you'll see in the video as soon as you watch it is uh, watch the coyote shot. That was one where thinking on my feet and thinking creatively allowed me to get pretty much my favorite shot of the entire trip and it all happened really fast. So that's another one of those circumstances where just being quick and thinking on your feet certainly paid off. So that's the shoot. I hope you guys learned something from this one and enjoy it. Hey everyone, welcome to my first visit to New Mexico. I was lucky enough to be hired to go out to Bosque del Apache near um, Socorro. It's about an hour south of Albuquerque in New Mexico. It's a national wildlife refuge and they have a big festival of the cranes there every year. And this right here in front of you is why everyone comes out. These cranes actually come to kind of roost or hang out. Um, at night in these ponds right in front of the mountains and while I photographed sandhill cranes plenty of times in Florida I've never been able to photograph them in front of habitat like this so while this wasn't initially the most exciting thing for me to try and come out and photograph I was happy to try and get them in some different habitat and see what I could do um, Unfortunately, I ended up being sick most of the time, so I wasn't able to get out as often as I'd like, but I do have some outings for you. So here is uh, the one time I went and uh, tried to shoot these sandhill cranes and the snow geese flying around. So I got there about an hour before sunrise, or I'm sorry, sunset, and the sun was gonna set in the background as you can see. And I was trying for backlit shots like this with these snow geese and sandhill cranes flying out like that. 
There comes the Sandhill Crane dropping in. So, for birds in flight like this with the Z9, I have found the best luck for me has been this wide area large uh, focus group. Basically this medium sized box in the center of the frame. And then it does do the bird and animal detection inside of that, which tends to work out. You can see the sun is setting behind the mountains there. I just set the GoPro down at this point just so you can kind of get a view and uh, see what it looks like back there. I did have that one snow goose kind of hanging out there. Um, and then I was trying to get a low perspective to minimize the water because it was really ripply. Um, it was also a chance to see if I could get any portraits of these birds with some of the habitat in the background. It didn't work out great, but it was at least worth a shot because standing up or sitting up and shooting down onto that water was certainly no good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I was trying to get that low perspective and then you could get the mountains in the background There's a pintail swimming through there and yeah, I had plenty of snow geese, but the lighting didn't work The lighting was okay. Actually. I don't mind the lighting, but that water is just a mess It was just too busy I wasn't able to get a real low perspective without getting out into the water, which I wasn't going to do because there was Dozens of people lined up behind me. They would have been not too happy if I walked out into that water and honestly I wouldn't have anyway because I didn't want to make a mess of myself so here we go I did concentrate more on just flight shots like this there was a snow goose here comes some sandhill cranes cruising in you can see how well the tracking does pretty much keeping focus on that bird I did try going with the a custom larger area to see if that would work but it only uh, did okay with just the bigger birds in the sky I was trying that to see if I could give myself a little bit more freedom of composition. Um, <clears throat> then we did get the sand hill walking across like this. I did get this one shot of him. Look at that out uh, against that tree. A little bit of editing really made him stand out quite nicely there. And you can see there he's walking across that habitat in the background. I did just keep playing with different compositions there, trying to make it work. There you go. He's just walking across. And then he got busy into the other birds there, and it just didn't stand up. I like the dark background here, and you can see I went with some darker um, exposure there. But he was just mixed in with the other birds too much, so it didn't really work out. You can see him kind of walking through the flock there. And yeah, all of these birds, I like them with their heads up in that dark, shaded area. But it was just too busy with all the other birds. So I kind of bailed on that and went back to the flight shots. Mostly trying some silhouettes, trying to get some glow there, but when they get low, it was just getting busy with the background, busy with other birds and that water. The water just sucked. If it was calm water, I think it would have been so much better. There you can see I'm using the regular 3D tracking. It works okay for some of these birds, as long as they're in the sky, but then watch when it gets down into here, it just starts to get lost and I gave up on that one. All right, I had these two birds off to the right. I tried a nice low perspective there for a little bit to see if they could do anything. I was waiting for their heads to lift up. That would have been the key for me, uh, but they didn't at first there. But I did keep an eye on them long enough to be able to make that work. Uh, getting a lower perspective would have been better. I would have been able to minimize the ripples on that water even more and get their heads up further. But again, like I explained, it would have been getting into a real muddy mess and potentially disturbing the birds, which is not something I was willing to do. All right, so level myself out a little bit. I did switch over to the snow goose because they weren't picking their heads up. I tried a couple of frames on him, but I, it's just that the line from the grass and the line from the, the shaded area there were just too much. Um, look, I did zoom out a little bit. I'm using the 1 to 400 here to try and show off some of the habitat. So I zoomed out a little bit, really putting them in the lower frame there. I do hate when all these numbers get in the way. But that's how this camera works. <laughs> and there we go, back to these guys. I am, however, shooting through some foreground. You can see how it looks kind of faded, right? There's like this reddish yellow, almost orangey wash over the image. And that's because I have the lens down shooting through some grasses there. I don't know that I even noticed that at first because I think I was looking at the flip screen. I didn't have my eye in the viewfinder. Uh, but at some point, I think I did catch on. There you go. I lifted up just a little bit to get over those grasses and you can see how much clearer it is now. So sometimes being lower isn't always better. 
All right, this would have been great if it was just that one bird, but I had two of them to deal with, and that made it challenging. I did try and get this pintail swimming through the water there, but I lost focus, and it was just so bright. I could not get an exposure there in, in that. I tried. Uh, you're not going to see it through the recording here. I did try. Here's a second one. I try even darker, uh, but you can see it's just there's no way to get an exposure on that water. The sun was just so intense. All right, back to trying to get some of these... Uh, sandhill cranes flying through again trying that low perspective just to get them skimming over the water if I was standing up I'd be shooting them against the water it wouldn't have worked out and then finally get back to these guys the one's picking his head up perfectly here but the other one just being down didn't work so I shot a few compose this way and then it finally dawned on me when he turned like this let's compose the other way and then I can just crop the other bird out I don't know if you guys can hear in the background. Some coyotes starting to make noise. Which was kind of cool. And you can probably hear people talking in the background because there's people all over the place. So anyway, uh, making that composition work the other way. Was able to get a shot out of it. Just crop the other bird out since they both weren't giving me kind of the heads up look that I wanted there. You can see the sun is finally starting to get lower here. I'm getting some more interesting silhouettes as these cranes continue to fly in. I tried for some up in the sky like that just to get that silhouette with the mountains. Uh, but it's hard to compose when that stupid box is stuck in the middle. So that is the main reason I did try for a larger box at one point. But it made it tougher to track. So there we go. Trying to get them coming in. Trying different zooms. And then they get lost when they hit that. The glow on the wings is nice there, but I would have needed to be closer, I think. Longer focal length. 400 millimeter wasn't quite cutting it for that. And honestly, I really wanted to show off the habitat more than be close. So there, I went really dark trying to get them circling around, but they didn't give me a great wing position. And then they went away from the sun. more of them dropping in they're so goofy with their legs hanging down look at that look at the leg breaks so I just kept trying over and over again just a bunch of different birds kept flying in they would coast in I took a look at this just to see what it would look like through the viewfinder backgrounds just a little too close and I gotta say if it was one or two birds it'd be all right it's just a mess of birds they're all tangled up nothing standing out I love the layers in the background like, there's potential for a shot there, but is the birds in the water too busy, I think? It just didn't work out for me. Some cool uh, blue morph snow geese hanging out there. They almost stood out, and then I started noticing these coyotes working the edge there. Look at them looking, just checking in on the snow geese. There was like three or four of them. So... Here's what happened, guys. I was just noticing the coyotes, trying to zoom out, take some shots with some scenic area in the background. But I noticed that they were intersecting that light line. See that golden line of uh, grass that's glowing in the sun there? And then we get the shade above it, and it's intersecting them. I tried going vertical just to see if I could show more above it. That didn't work out great. And at some point, it finally dawned on me, coming up shortly, if I lift my perspective up, I can put that coyote right in that band of brightness there. And that's exactly what I did. So I got my perspective up. I ended up getting up on my knees. Standing was too tall. Laying down was too low. And see how I put the coyote right in that band there? And then I went with a little bit of a darker exposure. And then with some post-processing, got that. I love it. It's one of my favorite shots. So let's revisit that one more time. So the first thing I notice is I'm too low, therefore the coyote is intersecting the light and the dark area. I then realize if I can pick my perspective up, I can line him up at least the main head and body in that golden line. I do that, get lucky with this composition with the tree. He turns and profiles, and then I get that shot. 
some editing in post to exaggerate the contrast and control where the highlight and shadow is. And I get one of my favorite shots that came from this entire trip. And it all happened just really quickly and being able to think fast on my feet. Back to the cranes, dropping in. Now we got some beautiful light. Tough exposures to manage though, with these birds going against the sky and then all of a sudden being against the dark shaded mountains. So I did go aperture priority auto ISO just so I could let the camera do some of that heavy lifting for me and just control my exposure compensation. Back to coyotes. They're just hanging out off to the side there. I don't know if they scared up these snow geese, but I did go wider with that. So you can see how fast the comp or exposure changed. And then the coyotes start. How cool is that? That was really fun to watch. He was just over there against that sign. There was no great shot to be had there. So I didn't bother getting anything at that point. And here's the problem. That sun is still really intense. So watch. I get good sky. These guys are going to drop too early. Yeah. See, they're just against the, the line there. I get a little bit of backlight, but not great. Also losing focus. So here we go. These guys are dropping in a little bit higher. Get the nice silhouette, but then they're just intersected into the black Let's see if some of these work just trying to get them to come in with that classic shape with their feet down and there's one of them I didn't have this on record but that was one of the shots I was able to get that silhouette against the sky this pair was nice they just kind of walked in front but the light was tough as far as that angle, they were walking away from the light. If they were walking into it, I think I may have had something there. Um, you can see them off to the right there walking in that wide view. Um, I got nice background, but only above them, like right around their feet, it's kind of busy. The water's distracting, and they're walking away from the light. I do love the layers in the background, though, so unfortunately I wasn't able to make it work. Really cool to watch them kind of drink like that. And then back to some of these birds just flying in as the train comes by behind. <laughs> you can hear that happening. And this is it. This is the last little bit of sun. You can see it's getting right near, right near the mountains there. The train cruising by in the background, pintail going through the water. Ah, oh, the sounds of nature. I tried that quick silhouette of the pintail. It just didn't turn out that great. Got all the coyotes hooting and hollering in the background, the train making noise, the sandhill cranes, all the people talking. It's an interesting place, that's for sure. So if that hillside wasn't there, man, the light on these birds would have been insane right at that moment. That would have been some cool light, but the birds are already in shade, so it's not working out that great. There's no way to get them to stand out. At this point, I threw my 35mm, the lens baby, on that has this little tilt shift action to it. And that's what I wanted to try and play with. Look at that. So you're going to see here, everything's going to be really far away. This is all 35mm. Uh, it's a manual focus lens. So what I'm trying to do at this point is get some silhouettes against the sky as these birds are dropping in. And I'm trying to play with the focal plane. I'm shifting it around a bunch of different ways. You're going to see the uh, focus highlighting kicking in the entire time because this is a manual focus lens. So at this point, I'm trying to have them in focus above and then the entire bottom half of the image out of focus. That's what I was attempting there. The colors, those dawn colors were starting to look kind of nice. Thousandth of a second trying for birds in flight. Still giving me a decent ISO. It wasn't that high. 
For some of these, I was trying, uh, again, that top half in focus, bottom half, and then at this point I shifted to so just a vertical plane is in focus. So you can see there's like a band of in focus kind of to the left third there, and I'm trying to get some of the birds in focus as they're coming through. They look okay through the viewfinder when I was shooting it, which is why I was taking them, but when you look at them in the final image on the computer, they're just too tiny. Those birds need to fly a lot closer to me. There's some snow geese cruising through. I think they're snow geese. So yeah, I'm just trying to basically put that focus point is around the rough area that's in focus as they come through. And you can see the whole right side is out of focus. There's some snow geese going overhead. And so this is just me cutting back and forth. There's just a lot of every time something came in, I was just trying. So this is my attempt of doing something unique, trying to be different, trying to use this different lens to get some different focal plane on it. I got that one shot that I shared earlier, uh, but most of these did not turn out. Most of these, they were just too small. The focus shift wasn't enough for me. So it was a worthwhile experiment, but one that I think I would have needed to spend more time there to really try and figure it out or have the birds fly through in the right area. It is kind of neat to see just parts of them in focus though. Like just some of the birds are in focus and then everything else kind of blurs out even though it's a wide-angle lens. So I do like that perspective. But yeah, I wasn't able to just fully come up with something. Then I tried to get just the reflection of these guys, but their bodies showed too much. If it was just the reflection of them, I think it could have been cool. But you can see there's water above them, like above that mud line, and they're kind of blending into that as well. See that? That's a little bit better there. It's just the reflection. And I was trying to just play with the scenery there, throwing that right side out of focus. So I have basically just a vertical band in focus on the left-hand side here. Um, and I was just waiting for a nice profile on those birds and waiting for them to get highlighted in focus. I was zooming in to try and focus on them. Every time they put their head down, though, it kind of messed it up. And the water was ripply there, so the reflection was getting killed. The wind on the water was making it really tough. A calmer day would have been much better. So then I started trying to go for this bird. He was a single by himself, back in the water. I think he was going to show a little bit better shape. That's why I started concentrating on him. And it ended up working out, as you'll see in a little bit here. So I'm just trying to keep him in that box. There we go. There's a profile. So I took a few. And I'm just zoomed in, waiting for him to profile, because it's hard to see. So it's small and far away. Just trying to keep him in that focused zone there. And then I wanted the whole right side of the image to go out of focus. And in just a little bit, you'll see I do manage to capture an image that I was happy with. But guys, this is tough. I just keep bouncing back and forth between zoomed and not. So I can see the composition and see if the bird is turning. There you can see he's turning. Walk in a little bit, and there's the image I got. You can see he stands out. He's silhouetted there. It's an interesting look. So I tried this just a little bit more, and then it eventually got so dark, I kind of gave up. Look, 3 20th of a second for flight, not really that good, and my ISO is all the way up at 4,000. I do love the colors, but that bird right there was not standing out enough. And then the flights were just getting you know, a little bit too shaky and blurred because my shutter speed was so low and everything was still so far away. So that was it.